Bible Poems, Two Kings. The tale of two kingdoms continues, often grim. Also a tale of two prophets. Elijah we know. He has a word for Ahab's son. Not good. Then it's time to leave, taken in a flaming chariot. His mantle falls upon Elisha. Another miracle worker, one each to match Elijah's and more. Syria's leper general Naaman has his flesh restored as a child's, precursor of new birth. Hard adversary for Ben-Hadad, knowing his plans, opening eyes to see angelic armies, Announcing God's victory in the siege. Lepers must not be silent about good news. Sought out in Syria, Elisha foresees Hazel's victory. Back in Israel, he is kingmaker, anointing Jehu, scourge of Ahab's line. Now we meet some better kings in Judah. Joash repairs God's temple, Azariah reigning long, Jotham. These did God's right, though each neglected to deal with sacrificial altars on the mountains. Not Ahaz, though, whose role models were the northern kings, and the first of Judah to sacrifice his son. Little grace in Israel, none in their kings, though still some scattered mercies. But Hoshea's reign will be the last. Samaria falls to Assyria, this nation's life is over. The reasons are quite clear. They started wrongly with golden calves. No mercy changed their downward course from bad to worse. One tribe is left, but the warning signs are there for Judah also. In Judah, Hezekiah takes the throne, the best king since David, truly a son to his father. At last the mountain shrines are gone. He saw Samaria's fall, then took the brunt of Assyria's onslaught. Rabshakeh yelling to the city's walls. God is now your enemy. Hezekiah prays. Isaiah hears, Isaiah hears and gives the godly message, fear not. Sennacherib will fall. Soon you will freely eat the fruit of fields and vineyards. And so it was. Sickness sees him in a different light, still praying, but heedless of what will later come. Advance of Babylonian armies. All the good he did, undone by his wicked son, Manasseh. No repentance in this book, but see another. Fifty-five long years of downward twists. At last, his eight-year-old grandson, Josiah, takes the throne and tries to turn the tide. The law is found and read and heeded. No one could try harder. He even tries to cleanse the northern sanctuaries and kept the Passover. But all too late, and Judah's last hope 
falls on Megiddo's plain. Evil kings once more, read Jeremiah. The Babylonians at the door, no rescue. Jerusalem falls, temple plundered, captives head into exile. The puppet king Zedekiah revolts again. Destruction of the city and the temple follow. All that the prophets warned have been proved true. The nation cast out from Yahweh's presence. But one note of hope. Jehoiakim is honoured at the Babylonian table of evil Merodach. Is there some future for the house of David? 